What's up guys, thanks for joining me for a new video. Today we are talking all about Amazon merch and we're gonna recap the craziest year that I can remember in Amazon merch and I've been selling since early 2017. This was a crazy year because merch closed down for an entire month. I mean, what the heck? So you're gonna see how that impacted my numbers and I'm gonna just go over all of the uh, relevant data points. I'm even going to do, well, two things you're gonna wanna stay till the end for. At the end, I'm gonna go over I'm going to share with you my most successful, most profitable niches, and I'm going to do a giveaway sponsored by Pretty Merch Pro. I'm going to give away a license to Pretty Merch Pro because without their tool, this video would have been a lot harder to do. So if you guys are interested, let's get started. Real quick, just wanted to make you aware that I run a weekly print-on-demand giveaway, and you can enter completely for free. Use the link near the top of the description. Also, this week is sponsored by Merch Titans, Print On Demand Upload Automation, Merch Ninja Research Tools for Amazon Merch, and All Sunset's premium pre-made professional quality graphics for you to use in your designs. I use them in a ton of my designs that sold this past year. Right next to that, I've got a link to my free Amazon Merch 7-day mini course, which is great if you're a beginner. It gets delivered via email, and I've got a link to my Amazon Merch Facebook group if you'd like to join. I'd love to have you. All right, let's get into it. So again, thank you to Pretty Merch Pro. I'm giving away a license at the end of this and they made this video available by giving me access to a bunch of really nice pre-done charts so I didn't have to like export data and pull it into Google Charts and you know, not that I don't mind doing that stuff. That's what I do for my Redbubble reports and um, some of the other videos I got coming up but it's much easier when Pretty Merch Pro just gives me access to the data I need. So this is all from the analytics tab that is only for, I believe, Pretty Merch Pro users. So here I went ahead, I selected all the international markets and I went to previous year as the time frame. So you get 365 days, even though it says 366. Um, was this like a leap year or something? I don't know. Yes, I just looked it up and it was in fact a leap year. So we got an extra day of sales, but then we lost a month. As you can see there, April, zero sales. If you guys made sales in April, tell me how you did it because everything on Amazon Merch was disabled. But that translated into success for those of us that were prepared that sell print on demand through Seller Central, which is something I talked a lot about at the time. But guys, even if Amazon Merch is open, you're leaving money on the table by not selling through Seller Central. This is something I cover in my Dropship Print on Demand course. By the way, you don't need the course to figure out how to do it. I'm just saying if you want step-by-step -step instructions, it's in the course. Um, but again, like the more internet real estate you occupy, the more money you will make. I made a killing in April through Seller Central because I wasn't competing with any of the Amazon Merch uh, sellers. So anyways, that, that's not gonna roll up into this video, but I'm gonna probably do a video talking about my Amazon Seller Central print on demand sales um, at some point, maybe this week, maybe next week, etc. But subscribe if you wanna see that video as well. But you can see here I did 6,380 sales in total across all the marketplaces. Here's a breakdown by marketplace. So I'm really primarily focused on the United States. In the past, I had uploaded a bunch of my, you know, really I call it my main design catalog. It's at this point, it's kind of outdated. These were the designs that when I was not using any automation and I was slugging through creating, creating unique designs every single day, I probably had 2000 designs, maybe 2,500 that um, I had just made through blood, sweat and tears. And I had uploaded these to the UK and German markets. You know, they were the first two international markets made available. So I still have some hanging on there, but I don't make uploading to them a priority. Uh, as you can see here, I'm primarily focused on uploading to standard t-shirts in the US market. So I did 6,130 sales in the US, had 261 returns. This generated $14,616 in royalties on $106,745 in sales in the US. My average royalty was $2.38. And by the way, this year I'm planning on trying to increase that number, that average royalty. I want to see if I can bring it up to like above $4. Honestly, that's my goal. Um, testing this out, it may work, it may not work, but you know what? I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. You'll see it on my month to month income reports and I'll eventually do a 2021 year in review. That is if a giant asteroid doesn't hit the earth at this point, right? <laughs> or if aliens don't make first contact. You know what? The alien niche will be hot though if they do. All right, UK, 153 sales, six returns. 396 pounds sterling in royalties generated on 2,442 pounds sterling of revenue. Average royalty per sale, 2.59 pounds sterling. Germany, 
94 sales, 17 returns, 193 euro royalty generated on 1,625 euros in royalties, average royalty per sale of two dollars and six cents or two euro and six cents and then i had three sales on the french market i believe uh sometimes if i have a design that i'm like really confident in like i know it's a big or you know like you can't really know but sometimes you have that itch you're like this is a big trend and i'm early so i'm gonna list it everywhere and see what happens well that was one of those cases and like i said if you stay till the end i'm gonna show you the uh, top level niches i believe two of like my top 10 were this design and i just enabled it in different products different marketplaces so that made up three sales in france Let's breeze through some additional data points. So I averaged 17 sales per day and between zero and one returns per day. By monthly metrics, that's 532 sales a month and 23 to 24 returns per month. So my best day on the year, I did 121 sales on December 10th. My worst day, I had 19 returns somehow on September 30th, that's crazy. And my best day in terms of royalties was also on December 10th where I made $264.09. Record months, I had 2,026 sales in December. And I know a lot of people did better in November than December, but I had a better December than November, which I guess non-standard or maybe it was. I don't know. A lot of the people I talked to, though, um, had a better November. So uh, returns, December, I, you know, I normally expect January to be the worst return month because a lot of the people that want to return Christmas gifts um, end up doing it in January. At least I had seen that in years prior, but I guess December this year was the worst return month and we'll see what happens next year based on the 2,000 sales I made in uh, December. I mean, so far in January, hasn't been too bad for me, though. And my best month by royalties, $4,411.40 generated in December 2020. So that's like the year of Christmas bonuses. I didn't get a Christmas bonus this year because, well, you could say I did because I was invested in Bitcoin and absolutely crushed it in December. But uh, I wasn't working my 9-to-5 job, so no Christmas bonus in that regard. Um, but you can see here, I treated myself to 4400 bucks from Amazon Merch. And I'll take that all day. That's more of a bonus than I usually would get at my um, old job. Although I will say there was a year where they hooked it up and gave us more than that. But um, that was not every year. Small company, web development, um, sales up and down. So the, the one year, though, that they did was really nice. I think it was like 8000 bucks, So pretty good. So I sold 2,792 unique products. This is 2.9% of all of my live products. As you guys may know, I have... 98,000 products currently live out of 100,000. Actually, you know what? I had to remove all my Trump shirts to be safe. So I have 97,000 products. I had about 800 and some, eight, between eight and 900 um, products that were inde indexed on the word Trump and I just deleted all of them to be safe. Um, the 80-20 rule, it looks like about 79% of my products were representative of 51% of my total sales. And royalties, 79% of my products generated 21% of the uh, royalties. All right, top product types. Um, every other product type that I sold said 0%, so they weren't really relevant after this. So this is really a glimpse into uh, the product types that I sold. 84% standard t-shirt. You know, I believe that they sell best. I probably should have been listing more on hoodies. That's something that, you know, if I can get to tier 200,000, I would absolutely be happy to do. But when I got tiered up in August to tier 100,000, I said that I was going to aim to get as many unique designs listed for sale on standard t-shirts as possible. And that's why you see that reflected in my standard t-shirt sales with 84% of my overall sales coming on standard t-shirts or 5,345. 381 sales of pullover hoodies, 242 sales of premium shirts, 143 sales of tank tops, 90 long sleeve shirts, 65 pop sockets. I don't even, I don't even upload to pop sockets, so that's weird. Um, I had done the uh, review of every Amazon merch product in earlier 2020, and I had created that like T-Rex vintage sunset pop socket actually from All Sunsets, and um, that one sold a bunch too, which was pretty funny since I was just doing it for a demo and ended up making me real sales. But V-necks, I sold 47, and uh, zip hoodies, even though you can't see behind me, I sold 32 of those. All right, top fit types, 60% to men, 26% to women, 8% unisex. By the way, some products are only sold as unisex, like um, tank tops, and 4% to kids. Now, prior to this year, prior to August of this year, I really didn't upload many to youth sizes because when I'm entering all these other niches and not doing the scaling out of a single design using automatepod.com, uh, which is what I've started doing after I had 100,000 upload slots, um, I was like really worried that I would enter a keyword that would trigger the extra strict 
youth content policy rejection. So I just wanted to keep my account safe and I just steered clear of even enabling them on youth. Ever since I started going with the scale out method though, I played it really safe with some really like high level generic, mainly high level generic evergreen niches that were kids friendly. So I have a lot more designs for um, kids. And if you watch my 2021 year in review, you'll see a lot more um, youth sales. Uh, top colors, 50% were sold on black t-shirts, 9% on, um, what is that, navy? Yeah, navy, 6% heather gray, 6% royal blue, 5% heather blue, 3% purple, 3% white, 3% slate, 2%, 2% on the uh, pink and powder blue, 2% red, 2% uh, cranberry or dark red. 1% Heather Gray, 1% uh, Kelly Green, 1% Green, 1% Olive Green. I want to sell more on the Olive Green, though. I think that shirt looks nice. And then the rest are all 0%, but you can see there the numbers of sales that I made. Yellow was uh, second most with 28, and silver was in 27, brown 20, which is interesting because I do enable brown pretty often. and only has 20 sales, so maybe I don't need to be offering as many on brown. All right, niches. Let's get into the niches. Those of you guys that are still with me, this is your reward. So I'm not going to show you the actual products, but I went ahead and I wrote down the high-level niches that these products were sold in. And as you can see on the year there, one of my most profitable products is a pullover hoodie, my number three most profitable. Um, so that's pretty interesting. So these are in order, by the way. So what I'm going to read to you in terms of the niches are correlate to the order that you see my top products here this is my top one two three four top eight products all right so the number one bestseller was in the political election 2020 niche who would have guessed now i don't chase trends too often but again if i'm like confident in something i'll i'll throw something up like if you if you saw how long it took me to create that design that was my bestseller it took no more than two minutes it was text-based um that's all i'm gonna say it's very simple like, again, people think the election stuff has to be complicated. It doesn't. And when I say people think, I'm really thinking of my girlfriend. We just did a video for her channel earlier, and she was, like, mad at me because I was like, uh, your designs, you should just keep them simple. But she doesn't believe me. But, you know, sometimes it can be done simple. Uh, evergreen. So my second bestseller was an evergreen that I had been selling. And, you know, what's funny is I actually sold it a bunch on a coffee mug this year, too. Like, a bunch. And it really benefited from people being at home. So it's kind of a work from home niche. Uh, again, though, it had been listed for a while, but it benefited from the Cerveza sickness. Social justice, number three, was the niche. My number four bestseller was a quote, and it's in the gym and fitness niche. My fifth bestseller is an internet meme. That's all I can really say about it. Uh, my sixth bestseller is a quote from a TV show. My seventh bestseller is a, another quote from the same TV show. You know how I say, guys? If you have the upload slots, kind of use it as a template, you know, <laughs> like swap out some text. Like if you're going to go and make a nice design, get more bang for your, you say bang for your buck, but you don't, you're not invested with money here. You're only invested for time. So literally what I did is I made a nice template for quotes from a TV show and I just swapped in different words that people had said on the show, you know, and that's it. I don't name the TV show in the listing. It's just quotes and apparently there's demand i mean you can see there combined it's about 500 bucks in uh, royalties and my eighth bestseller is actually the same design as my number one bestseller there uh it is the political and uh, election 2020 niche and actually look at that in my top eight highest generating royalties two of them were pullover hoodies so i think that's all i need to know i should be listing more hoodies all right and guys thank you for watching this far in if you would like to win a free license to Pretty Merch Pro. Do me a favor, leave me a comment below in the description. And you know what I want to know? I want to know what you think the highest grossing niche is going to be in 2021. Is it going to be politics? And I, I want to know on the year. So I know in January, you guys already know what I'm going to say. It's probably the inauguration. But on the year, what is it going to be? Is it going to be more um, putting the Cerveza sickness spin on things? Is it going to be you know, aliens making first contact and that niche blows up? Is it going to be some other thing out of left field that nobody can predict? Kind of like last year, the whole year got hijacked. Let me know your guess in the description or in the description, in the comments below. Drop me a comment. And then what I'm going to do is um, tomorrow when I do my video, I will use a comment generator 
and it will automatically pick somebody and then i'll announce that in the video and i'll give you your license to pretty merch pro all right that's it guys thanks for watching this video quick reminder i have a full amazon merch course it's over 80 lectures it is very in-depth about how to start scale and then automate your uh, amazon merch business so if you'd like to check that out there's a link in the description and again guys do me a quick favor like subscribe if you're not subscribed somehow about half of you guys aren't subscribed and i'll see you tomorrow <laughs>